Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and welcome to the start of my historical romance readathon vlog. Today is the 9th of May and it is the start of a week long readathon, the historical romance readathon. This is run by Jessica, Lacey, and Lisa. Um, I'm linking everybody down below. Um, but yeah, it's basically a week of you reading historical romances. Now I'm not going to be doing any of the prompts or bingo boards or anything because like I'm in a huge reading mood. Like I'm a big mood reader, especially right now with everything that's been going on with me. I just want to pick up what I want to pick up and I don't want to follow certain guidelines, you know? So I'm just going to be reading historical romances and that's it. <laughs> I do have two books that are on my like immediate TBR that I want to get to. Um, first one is one of my most recent book purchases, which is A Reckless Match by Kate Bateman. I've heard a lot of my friends here on booktube rave about this book. I think it's like a rivaling family's romance and the two of them fall in love. Um, I've heard great things about Kate Bateman and there are um they just got in on libby they got a bunch of her audiobooks in. well not a bunch like four one of them is this one so i have this one checked out but it's the first in one of her other series the other series that i know of by her there's three books in it and all of them are on libby too and so i could listen to those if i wanted to and then one that i for sure want to finish is How to Entice an Enchantress by Karen Hawkins. I love this series so much. This is the uh, third book in the Duchess Diaries series. I loved the first book and the second book and um, but I read it months ago and I got to this point like page 102 months ago and then put the book down because I'm in a big slump when it comes to reading physically. Also don't y'all love my bookmark. Isn't it so cute? It's Feyre and Reese. I know this is the historical romance readathon, but this is about my lovely friend Spirit. I have her Etsy store linked down below as well as a discount code that you can use on her shop. She has a historical romance one, so let me grab that. Here it is. Isn't it so cute? Um, she has another one too. She has a few historical romance ones on there, but this is just one of them that I found. Um, but yeah, you can use my code. Um, I think it's Avery15 to get a discount on your order on her Etsy shop, but I love her bookmarks so much. They're very sturdy and beautiful. So um, I maybe need to flip out these bookmarks because this one's more a part of the readathon than Feyre and Reese are. <laughs> I was loving this. Basically, our hero is a scarred hero and uh, it's like a bunch of, of my favorite tropes in here. They are, her family's house is next door to his house. He's like a titled person, she's not. Um, and like they become friends over their love of books. He's very uh, grumpy and stoic and everything. And so he is like, I'm never gonna marry for love. So I have a lot in common with this woman. So I feel like we could make great friends and be a great husband and wife, but just be friends and not be loved, but have passionate times together, whatever. You wanna sit? One second, Ollie's wanting lap time right now. Ugh. Okay, you can sit. Um, anyway, he basically tells the heroine that though. He's like, hey, I want to propose to you, but just so you know, there's not gonna be any love here. And she's very offended. And some of the things that he say says in here is very like, scene, rain, the, the, uh, the rain scene in Pride and Prejudice uh, 2005 with Keira Knightley and stuff. Like, it's very that vibe of like, a man professing his uh, affection towards a woman and her being completely offended by what he says. <laughs> um, and so he's trying to get this woman to marry him because they fe he feels like they could have like a great life together. He goes to her godmother who has been notoriously known for setting up our heroine's two sisters in the other two books and is like, hey, I need your help. Um, and so she invites both of them to a month long or longer house party and they're forced to be in forced proximity even though the heroine is very offended by this guy. Um, and he's just trying to get her to notice him again. And um, that's all that I remember. I was like this part of the way through. I don't know if I'm going to restart it or what. I, I might like skim and flip through the pages that I've already read um, so I can read the rest. but. I wanted to make a goal this week to physically read at least one book because I have so many amazing historicals on my shelf here. I have like a whole cart, double stacked historical romances that are beautiful and I want to read them, but they're only in physical format. <laughs> so there's no other way for me to read them. Anyway, today 
Um, it is 1.30 in the afternoon. I recently got home from Pilates. We're gonna see if Pilates can help me with my very hypermobile and bendy body and see if that improves my health. Um, and it's very like low key, slow moving Pilates. Like we're kind of just working on the inner workings of my body and like breathing and stuff like that. And so I have that three times a week. I'm gonna be going three, two, twice more this week. Um, and then I started a book um, by Maya Banks. I, I want to read all of Maya Banks's backlist, but I'm, I, I already read all of her Highlander ones because <laughs> she's like, if you want a good Highlander romance, like Maya Banks is the best. She is the best. Um, so I've read all of her Highlander ones. So I have to read her like London set ones. Um, this is one of her vault books. They're all, it's, there's four of them. They're all independent of each other. I've read one of them. I liked it. It was okay. It's not as good as her Highlander ones. Um, but this one I'm enjoying so far. Our heroine in here, she's 20 and she has been engaged to this guy since she was basically born by their families were matched them up, whatever. Um, and she doesn't really have any passion with him whatsoever. And so she's like, you know what? I find my romance and my future husband to be quite lacking. So I'm going to have some passionate time before I turn 21 when I have to marry this guy. And so she goes to this infamous rake and is like, I want you to take my V card essentially and um, teach me the ways of the marriage bed. And then I think the two of them are gonna get married, obviously. <laughs> um, so I am hopefully going to finish that today um because it's a very short audiobook it's like a six hour audiobook um so yeah i have to clean up around my room so i'll pop pop the headphones in and um listen to it while cleaning my room because it's very messy i also have to do my nails today because some of the nail polish come off so i'm gonna do some of those things um while listening to my audiobook and i also have to go eat some lunch so can you say hello buddy say hi clever he's been very very mushy and lovey today he doesn't like to be held he's not a held kind of kitty like like oreo is so he's like pushing against me but i just love to cuddle him we give him all the squishies and then we let him go because we know he don't like it <laughs> there you go <laughs> i finished until midnight by maya banks i finished it yesterday evening i want to say and it was okay it was three stars my reviews for all these books that i'm going to talk about in the vlog are already up on Goodreads for you to look at because I like writing Goodreads reviews right after I read a book. So um, that review is already up right now. It was okay. It was three stars. I just like didn't really care for the heroine all that much. She got on my nerves with how immature she was being at times and lashing out at people, just being bratty. She was being brat, honestly, um, and being very spoiled. Um, also, my hair is ridiculous, I just realized this. <laughs> You're gonna have to deal with me. I'm not in the best mood or the best feeling state uh, today. So um, I just put it in a French braid and it has layers, so it's falling out. So um, anyway, I started a book this morning while I was helping my mom with some work and um, I decided to DNF it like 30 minutes ago. I got through 43% and I'm done. <laughs> I think it's called The Duke I Once Knew by Olivia Drake. I can't remember if that's the exact title, but I know the author is Olivia Drake. The summary sounded so good. It's about this heroine who becomes the governess to our hero's younger sister. And the hero and the heroine have a past. Like 15 years ago, they were um, like childhood lovers or whatever. Now um, she's the governess to his younger sister. That sounded amazing, right? I love a good angsty second chance romance, especially if there's a governess involved. Like I love reading governess historicals. This just turned out to be garbage with the hero. The hero is absolute garbage. I hate him. I wrote my Into My Gritters review. He's one of the worst heroes I have ever read about ever in a historical. I despise him. <laughs> He was just gross. He was like a walking red flag of a man. If you want to know what kind of man you don't want in life, read this book to, um, or don't read this book. But like this hero is the caricature caricature of what a red flag of a man is. First, one of the things is <laughs> when he and the heroine are younger, there's this one scene that's like a flashback scene to when they were younger and is like kind of like the reason why they were apart, you know? Um, 
or they were split apart and the reason for their second chance romance of them coming back together 15 years later or whatever so when they're younger the hero the hero's mother dies he is very distraught very upset and the heroine and him have this glade in the forest that they meet at and so she's comforting him like saying like it's okay to talk about your feelings with me i won't talk to anybody like you can trust me to be like a shoulder to cry on essentially like she's being very comforting to him and saying like it might be beneficial to you to let your feelings out but you don't have to and he just starts like kissing her and groping her and she's like i don't want this right now like you're going through something very difficult and I want my first time to be not with nothing like that hanging over either our, of our heads. Like, I don't want to be pressured into something like that. He's like, come on, my mom just died. Like, he's like being like that, like, come on, I need a distraction, come on. And he knows that she's never been with anybody. And then she's like, she stays her ground. She's like, no, like, I'm not going to do this. And then he's like, well, fine, I'll go find someone else to give me a distraction then and walks off. And they haven't spoken to each other in 15 years. And he's mad at her because apparently he wrote her letters afterward, like saying like, that was a ridiculous thing that happened. That was just a ch childish boy. Can you forgive me? Whatever, not a real apology. And so um, apparently they were trying to write letters back and forth to each other and they never got the letters. And she wrote him saying like, I understand you were under distress or whatever. Like I still want to be friends or I still want to be in your life and nothing no responses whatsoever that was like a red flag for me because that whole scene is are you kidding me like that's what like a villain would say like that is gross that is gross and when the present chapters he is bad too like he comes with a mistress to the house he hasn't been to in years that his sister is living alone with with their aunt and he brings their mistress and starts getting it on with her in the library where anyone can walk in on. His young, like, child sister can walk in on them. And then he gets pissed for the to the to pissed at the heroine because the heroine is in the library when they decide to come in and have a rendezvous. She's like, I was getting a book. It's a library. Why are you mad at me? And then it just got to, like, the 53% mark. And... He was still so proud that he had been with so many women and, like, was a rake. And I'm just like, this is not it. I hate you. <laughs> There's, like, other things in there, too. Like, I, I just despise this man. I despise him. So I was like, why am I going to put myself through this torture? Because this heroine deserves way better. And she is so dumb to forgive him for what happened when they were kids because... She forgave him way too fast for what he almost did to her. And then what he said afterward, this man pisses me off. So I was like, I'm done. I don't want to put myself through this torture and watch his heroine fall for a douche canoe. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're on to better and brighter things. Um, I picked up this book. This is How to Entice an Enchantress. I'm on page 65. So I think in the last clip, I talked about how like I stopped at page 103 like a couple months ago. Um, but I decided to see if I could just start from page 103 and I could not. I was like, oh no, what has happened? I don't remember. So I had to go back and I kind of like skimmed and only read the dialogue and most important parts because it was starting to come back to me. But right now I'm like so intrigued. So I'm reading it like page by page, sentence by sentence, you know, um, I'm on chapter four and <laughs> This is, I feel like, going to be an amazing book that I just know I'm going to love because it is a very Darcy and Elizabeth-esque, especially the hero being very much like Darcy in the fact that he doesn't see what he did wrong with his, like, because apparently he, the hero in here, like, proposed to the heroine like a year or months ago. I don't remember the time frame, but he proposed to her once before. She was so offended by what he said. Let me... Let me, let me read it. Let me pull it up. Okay, so there's this scene where the heroine comes into the house party and her godmother and her best friend, Lady Charlotte, are there to help Kirk, Lord Kirk, help him get with Delilah. Um, and so they're there when they first meet again. Delilah is pissed. She's like, what are you doing here? Apparently Lord Kirk was not 100% transparent with what's happened between him and Delilah to um, 
her grace and her best friend lady charlotte um so because in the previous book you read about how delilah's sister had to make an advantageous marriage i think it's how to pursue a princess i love that one um she had to make an advantageous marriage to save her dad because her dad got in this large debt with his neighbor which is lord kirk um and so she's pissed that he did this to her dad, but that's not the top of it all. That's the only thing that the Duchess and um, Lady Charlotte know is that like, oh, he made her dad become in a debt, whatever. But there's more to the story. So they're asking her, what else did he do? Because it's obviously not just this debt that he made his her dad go into. And she said, Lord Kirk asked me to marry him in a way that was, I can only say that no woman would ever accept such an insulting proposal. And then she said, Lord Kirk said, that he wished to marry me in spite of my lack of culture and the fact that my family was not in a class he wished to associate with. Very Darcy and Elizabeth in the rain scene-esque, right? And then he's like, no, that's not what I said. She was like, okay, then what did you say? And he said, I spoke nothing but the truth. I said that in spite of the fact that you led such a sheltered life, which you have, and are thus ignorant of the way of culture, which you are, and in spite of the fact that your family has little to recommend it in a fortuitous, fortuitous connection, which even you must admit is true, I nevertheless wish to marry you. And then he's like, what's wrong with that? All I said was the truth. And in spite of all those issues, I still wish to marry Delilah, which is surely worth noting. And then she goes, I can assure you it was the easiest of all proposals to refuse that gave me so much like darcy and elizabeth vibes you know i was like yes 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 and then there's also they're like bickering and bantering and like yelling at each other during this scene too like she starts insulting him she's like you are so arrogant and they're like yelling at each other and everything and then the duchess is like stop both of you and then lady charlotte i love these two the duchess and lady charlotte like two pieces in a pod i love them she goes lady charlotte lean forward towards the duchess oh no margaret you do not understand in this moment, they will fall into each other's arms. That's how it is in my novels that I read. Because <laughs> she loves reading like sh swashbuckling romance novels. Um, but yeah, I love these books. If you don't read this series yet, you need to. It starts with, where's the first one? Here it is. This is How to Capture a Countess. Um, I love this series because all three of them take place at the Duchess's estate. And if you love like meddlesome family member romances, these are the books. I don't own book two yet in physical form, but I'm so excited. The first two are on audio, I know. And I know this one's not on audio, so that's why I'm reading it in physical format. But I am loving this so far. It's so cute. Um, okay, I feel like I've been talking your ear off. So I want to go read this and hopefully get to my catch up point. I have around 40 pages until I catch up. Um, and hopefully it just gets even better. I feel like this could be an amazing romance. I've been also writing down in the front on a sticky note all of the uh, sub tropes or romance tropes that I could make a video off of <laughs> in here. So we have a widower, a scarred hero. They're both book lovers, a reclusive hero, their neighbors. It's part of a sibling series because each book is about the Balfour sisters. Meddlesome family members and the hero has a disability. Um, he and his um, now deceased wife were um, casualties or his wife was a casualty in a explosion on a boat that they were on. Um, that's why he has a scar on his face and his leg has not been the same since. He walks with a limp and with a cane. So um, there's just a bunch of things about this book that I am loving. So I'm hoping to love this book way better than the one I just DNF'd. Hi guys, it's the next day. I thought I would do a outdoor clip because um, I need my daily outside trip outside to get some vitamin D. <laughs> and um, why not just chat with you while I'm out here? Um, and the dogs will probably be walking around here. You could probably hear them panting. One of them is begging with this. You want this? Come here, come here. He's like a little shark with a ball. Um, anyway, I thought I'd update you outside because um, it's kind of nice outside. I have made progress in this book. I am on page 179, pause. <laughs> um, so chapter 10, I believe. These chapters are kind of long, um, which I'm not that big of a fan of, 
um because i don't like long chapters but i'm liking how this is going there's some like snooty spoiled rich girls at this house party who keep making fun of lord kirk and his scar and the fact that he has a limp and like publicly making fun of him and like gossiping about him to other people and dahlia is not here for it at all also i know in the last clip i called her delilah it's dahlia not delilah <laughs> all of her sisters are flower names um so there was i think rose lily and dahlia those are their three names of the balfour sisters but anyway so dahlia's having none of that she's like you don't get to make fun of somebody because of a disability a disability that they have that they have no control over whatsoever there's even one point where one of the girls was like trying to make fun of him and dahlia was like telling her you better stop essentially and then lord kirk overhears what this woman is saying and um, Dahlia, even though she does not like Lord Kirk right now because of what he's done to her, she kind of comes to his rescue and is like, come on, will you dance with me? Like, let's go dance to um, show these girls that he is not as grotesque as the, as the rumors they're spreading about him. So um, I like that. And so she's about to get in a play like a game. It's not Pall Mall. It's like a different kind of game that was really popular in that time and she challenged these two girls to the game and is like i bet i can beat you just by myself and then you're a team i bet i can beat you one against two at this game and show you like it has something to do with like defending lord kirk's honor or something like that um so i'm about to read that part of the book i did start i'm about to finish another book um on audio it's a kate bateman book the first book in one of her series I think it's this is it this earl of mine it's something with earl in the title um i'm liking it i think i'm gonna rate it four stars by the way this is going uh, i do feel like it's dragging on a little too long for me with all of the exterior plot lines going on besides the romance some of my friends here on booktube they love like other things going on besides just the romance and romance books like in this romance our heroine essentially has this cousin who's trying to get her fortune um by kind of like forcing himself upon her and she the only way that she can think to make him stop is by marrying a man on death row she ends up marrying our hero who is working for scotland yard and like kind of like undercover at the jail um and he's not actually gonna die and so he has to marry this woman that is one of the richest ladies in London because all these men are not after her for loving her, they're after her for her money and she's sick of it, especially her cousin being grotesque. He marries her and then they're at a party like a few weeks later and there he is. And she's like, oh my gosh, I thought you were going to die. What is going on? I have a husband. And so they also have to work together on finding out this mystery plot line or whatever that like, that was the reason for him going undercover in this jail cell and like i don't care about that <laughs> i don't care about stuff like that i don't care about mysteries and stuff like that in romance books like i'm a character driven uh reader more so than a plot driven reader and so i feel like that just takes away from their romance and so i find it to be boring i know some of my friends here on booktube prefer an exterior plot line along with the romance but i don't it's just like i know that some of my friends did not love radiance by grace driven as much as i do and it's probably because it focused solely on ildico and brisha and getting to know one another and loving each other and that was basically it um you get more of the like the outside plot line and political stuff and royalty aspects in book two in that series but anyway we're not talking about <laughs> fantasy romances right now i'm liking it so far i have like an hour left of the audiobook and so i've been listening to it while uh, organizing my room and stuff i did have um my session of pilates today i have it every monday wednesday friday now it was nice i'm hoping that this exercise specialty is that the right term for it this form of exercise will be beneficial for me because like my mom perfectly described it to my pilates instructor today she was like some days avery has amazing days to where she's able to exercise go on kind of a long walk do some ex like a workout routine and um burn off some steam burn off some calories whatever you want to call it but then my body is not able to consistently put up with that because the next day i am bedridden for the next four to five days i am bedridden because of that 
And so there's no way for me to build muscle to help my body. Because I have very bendy joints that have no real muscle to them. Um, because my body is does not have endurance at whatsoever. I can't build up endurance. I can't build up muscle. And so it's kind of difficult right now. But we're hoping with this slow progression with Pilates, it will be beneficial for me. We actually got an appointment finally with a doctor we think could be a special that that's a specialty doctor a specialist in um neurology my members on my channel know who watch my daily not daily my weekly reading vlogs that i post only to my members that i was having a very hard time with my neurologist that i was given to based on my insurance earlier this year a couple months ago he made me feel horrible about myself and honestly, it was one of the worst experiences I've ever had with a doctor. And so we're gonna see a new neurologist. He's linked to the same hospital that I went to last month. I've heard nothing but amazing things about him based on reviews and the nurses that work in his department and everything have talked to my mom. Um, and so I have an appointment at the end of May. And so I really hope that's gonna be like a positive thing but the thing is like i don't like setting my expectations too high because that's happened way too many times where i feel like a doctor could help me and then they don't and i am very disappointed and so it's kind of really hard for me to stay positive right now i try my hardest like i do because i know that a positive mindset can kind of like help you feel better about yourself but it's really difficult when you keep getting let down by people that's the point that i'm at right now um sorry i just went on a little rant about my health but i know that some of y'all are really sweet and check in with me and so i thought i would update that for a second this dog is so dirty you really in the mud didn't you or some dirt patch i swear i think i'm done throwing this to you give me a kiss thank you <laughs> he's like now throw it last this is his last one and then we're gonna go inside <laughs> hello everyone um it is the next day it's actually 11 o'clock at night the next day that's also why it's really dark in here right now is because it's 11 o'clock at night and i know the lighting's not great and i'm sorry but i have finished <laughs> quite a few books since I've talked to you. <laughs> I ended up finishing This Earl of Mine. Um, it's the first book in this trilogy of books. I don't remember the series name, um, but I finished it. Um, my review for it is on my Goodreads. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I liked it. I think I talked about this in my last clip, how like the subplot that was not the romance was just not my thing. I didn't really like care for it all that much. I didn't I just didn't care like they were trying to find this um person who stole a submarine or a boat and i'm like i don't care <laughs> so like the romance was pretty swoony with like the two of them but i did not care about the side plot whatsoever <laughs> and then i had a hard time picking what book to listen to next i was like do i read the next book in this series or do i uh try and listen to some of the other audiobooks i currently have checked out on libby that are historicals i just like didn't know and i literally tried two of them I didn't care for them. I don't even remember what they were. <laughs> I didn't put them in my Goodreads. But then I was like, you know what? I liked this Kate Bateman series. I might as well just go back to it, finish it. So this might be like a Kate Bateman vlog. <laughs> like I'm gonna be reading a lot of book, a lot of her books in this video. So I did read book two, which is To Catch an Earl. I finished it today. Um, the second book in the series, this is the one where our heroine is a jewel thief and the hero, um is friends with the guy from book one like each book is about this uh one of the guys in this friend group who all work for the police kind of and their romances so this is about one of the friends who's trying to find out who's stealing these jewels and it's our heroine and he's trying to like prove that it is our heroine but then he ends up falling in love with her <laughs> so i liked this one um i gave it four stars i liked it more than book one um, just because I found like the jewel heist situation to be way more interesting than boats. <laughs> so yeah, my read for that is on Goodreads. If you would have watched my Mafia Romance reading vlog, I made this notebook, which is my author backlist notebook, and I decided to make a Kate Bateman page. So this is just like each page is dedicated to an author and all the books I have not read yet by them. 
their page number, what series they're in, and where I can find them for the most affordable slash cheap price or free price. Um, I try to do free as possible, like through the library or KU isn't free, but you know what I mean. I try very hard to find books through my library, honestly, and Kindle Unlimited. I found one of her books um, under her pen name. She has a pen name called uh, KC Bateman, um, and there was a novella um, available to download off of my Libby that was literally 15 pages long. And I'm like, you know what? I'm in the mood for a novella, so why not? Um, this is The Midnight Clear, I think. It's literally 15 pages. It's about like a heroine who is um, in love with her brother's best friend, but they've been at war. Her brother and his best friend have been at war for two years. And then she's traveling to London to meet with them after two years. And she's gonna decide to like reveal her feelings to this man, but she and her maid end up getting stuck at this place um during a snowstorm and the hero decides to trek through the snowstorm to try and find his woman and profess his feelings for her because he also has feelings for her i liked this i gave it four stars like it would have been an amazing full-length novel like it would have been beautiful but i think you know what i think i think this book kind of inspired a little bit the book that i'm reading right now which is the princess and the rogue which is book three in the series, the last book in the series. And this one is actually an Anastasia retelling and, and a lot of the same folklore that was in The Midnight Clear is in this book. One of the characters is Russian, the Anastasia character, and just like a lot of the folk tales that were talked about in um, the novella that I just mentioned are in this book. And um, yeah, I am almost 50% of the way through The Princess and the Rogue. And this is on the track to being a five-star read just because like, I am a huge, huge, huge sucker for anything Anastasia. Like that movie was everything to me as a child, the animated movie, everything to me as a child. It's one of my favorite anime movies, animated movies of all time. I will rewatch it till the day I die. I could probably mouth all of the words in that movie. Um, I adore it. I love the musical too. The musical is amazing. Like I, I love it just for the nostalgia factor. That's why like I'm so excited for Sophie Lark's Anastasia book that's coming out whenever it's her next book that's gonna be published and I'm so excited. But anyway, I'm currently reading this book and I'm loving it. Our Anastasia character fleed Russia um, because her brother died and then this evil high society man is trying to force her to marry him. It's been many years, I don't know how long, but she and her companion have been living in London for quite a long time and being um, like regular people in society, like she's not claiming that she's a princess. Um, and right now she's working as a dowager, dowager duchess's companion. That duchess's uh, nephew is our hero in here. I cannot remember his name, Sebastian, I think. Someone's out to kidnap Anastasia, maybe the same man who tried to get her to marry him at the beginning, the bad man. And so Sebastian is kind of like protecting her, but he doesn't know her true identity. So I'm loving this a lot. And that's why I'm gonna say I'm like 50% of the way through. And I don't know if I'm gonna be listening to any more tonight just cause I kinda, I kinda wanna watch Castle. <laughs> I read a lot today. And then I do wanna mention, I did download a book on KU that hopefully I will start soon. I'm in like the novella mood. So I tried to find historical romances that were novellas and I found a Stacy Reed one and I love Stacy Reed. So this one is called The Marquess and I. Um, and I think there's disability rep in this book. I am excited to read this. It's only like a hundred something pages and maybe I'll read a little bit tonight before bed. And then I have not read any of my Karen Hawkins book today just cause I haven't, I've been doing um, some organizing and cleaning and um, doing a lot of Etsy stuff today. Um, I, If you don't know, I make bookmarks on Etsy. My Etsy shop is always linked down below. It's kind of like towards the bottom of the description, um, but I make watercolor bookmarks and I have printed ones as well. I know this is not book related, but I got um, my readmittance re um, acceptance letter from my university yesterday and I forgot to mention it to y'all. That's something. If y'all don't know, I had to leave school for the spring semester, my senior year, um, because of health reasons. And so I got readmitted for the fall and I will be going to school as a disabled student now, which I didn't anticipate. And so I'm having to kind of like change the way I think about things because I just had to send a bunch of emails out today asking about like 
is the classroom I'm in or the classroom that I'm going to be placed in. Can we make sure it's handicap accessible? I need information about carpooling and such because I'm not allowed to drive anymore. The like attendance policy is really strict at my school and some days I might have an episode and I will not be able to get out of bed unless you want me to black out and have like a seizure in your classroom. I can't and so I don't think I should be penalized for staying in bed because of that. And so I have to get with disability services about changing my attendance policy because that's why I had to leave school um, in January is because my senior methods, my senior level education classes are very strict. And if you miss two days of classes, you will be asked to leave the department. And I knew there was no way after, a after the day after having an episode and the day of having an episode, which was the day classes were supposed to start. It's like, there's no way. I can move or even retain any information. I just want to get this degree and be done with. Um, I'm going to have to email because I'm pretty close with a few of my professors because some of them I've worked with in, in the department before, but I'm going to have to have like a full on meeting or chain email or something with them talking about like, I'm going to try my hardest to be as present as possible, but I'm just trying to finish my degree. I don't know if I will actually be able to be a teacher anymore because of what has happened to me. Um, but I want to finish this degree. I've spent so much money and so much time on this degree and I just want to get this degree. I hope that everything works out and they're accommodating. It's just, I think, scary because I've heard horror stories and know multiple people who are not given the things they need because they have a disability. It's kind of scary, very scary to think about because I want to do my best, but... Um, some people might not allow me to do my best and I hope my school is not like that. Anyway, I went on a little bit of a rant. <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna go to bed. I'm going to watch some Castle. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, it is a couple days later, honestly. <laughs> Last clip you saw of me was Thursday. Today is Sunday. I just didn't really feel like filming on Friday and Saturday. Saturday, yesterday, I spent all day out of the house uh, uploading YouTube videos. And by the time I got home, I was pooped. I was tired. I was also working on other stuff. I was working on my other YouTube channel branding and stuff like that, which is linked down below to it's my chronic illness channel. I just filmed a video for it. I have finished a few books since I've last spoken to you. So uh, I did end up finishing The Princess and the Rogue by Kay Bateman. I gave it five stars. Um, I loved this Anastasia retelling. It was so good and I feel like so worth the hype, but I think you'd love it even more if you read the other books in the series too. Even though I did not love the other two as much as book three, you need to read the first two to love book one as much as you should, honestly. And then I also finished The Marquess and I by Stacey Reed. I gave this one four stars and yeah, our heroine in here, she uh, suffered from an accident and she is now blind and it's a second chance romance with the guy she had to uh, the guy she had to break she had to break this guy's heart to make him go away or else her father would be out to get him um kind of like again the magic by Lisa Kleypas a little bit he comes back he's now a titled guy and um she is now visually impaired and um they kind of have like a little bit of an animosity at the beginning and then goes back into love and the love they've never stopped sharing for each other. And I give this one four stars just because there were some things that kind of didn't really make sense. Like at the beginning when her father's like, get rid of him or I will kill him or, or ruin him or whatever, he like slaps her. He like hits her. He is really rude to her. And then like, it's as if that never happened. She's treating her father as if he's never assaulted her. I was like, did they just forget that he's hit his kid? <laughs> like, why is she still like, waiting for his approval and loving him so much and now he's a kind man like i don't get it i liked it though and i really want to read the rest of the books in the series because i feel like they're gonna be really great i think there's more disability representation in like some of the later books so i'm excited and i love stacy reed her writing was amazing in here there were just some things that kind of like just didn't make 100 percent sense to me i then did finish how to Entice an Enchantress by Karen Hawkins. I gave this five stars. 
I think just because like I love Karen Hawkins writing and this couple, their dichotomy and their characters themselves were great. It's not necessarily my favorite romance ever though. I do think it's worth the five stars, but after like reflecting upon it, I think it's like more in actuality, like a 4.5, um, but that's just me. But I recommend this entire series. It is so stinking good. I have the 100 page novella. What's it called? I gotta pull up my Kindle. I haven't checked out from the library. It's called Princess in Disguise. And maybe I'll read that today, I don't know, but I'm ending the vlog here. This is the last clip. That will probably maybe be in a wrap up later um, next month. I'm really liking Karen Hawkins writing. The Duchess Diaries, this whole series is amazing. If you love house parties and historicals, every book takes place in a house party. If you love meddlesome family members, they're in here. If you love cute, adorable pugs getting in everybody's business and kind of like, pushing people towards each other, you know what I mean? You're gonna love this. And if you love uh, heroes that will do anything for their women, that's literally every single guy in this series, all three books. I love this series, I've already talked about it enough, this book enough, so I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> and then a book that I finished and started yesterday that I haven't mentioned yet is Highland Spitfire by Mary Wine. Um, I first heard about this book from Tamika over at Tamika's library. I think she just changed her channel name to make this library. Um, and she loved this. She gave this five stars. And I was friends with, with Tamika all the way back in like 2020 when I think I remember this one live show we were all on. And one of the questions was, what's one book, what's one genre of romance you'd never read? And she immediately goes, historical romance. I could never, ever like historical romance. <laughs> and then she reads this book. She gives it five stars. <laughs> This is the first historical she read and she loved it. Like her review was on Goodreads. I love it. I recommend checking out Tamika. She's amazing. I heard that she loved this. This is an enemy to lovers slash rivaling families uh, historical romance, basically. This one family has been feuding with this other family and the prince regent has forced them to marry each other. Like the children of the clan leaders are forced to marry each other. Kind of like uh never seduce a scott up there but they're like really enemies in here um and yeah this one i gave 3.5 out of 5 stars i liked it it was entertaining the interruption and blue ball moment that kept happening throughout this entire book was like come on like i don't personally care for that when an author like prolongs a couple getting together intimately by people interrupting them constantly and that just keeps happening and happening and happening at this point i just keep rolling my eyes every time something happens i'm like this is ridiculous just let it happen like how is this furthering the plot along like i don't get it um so i liked it i don't personally care for romance books where it's kind of like a parent that they're more so in love with each other based on the physical parts of their relationship instead of the emotional parts of the relationship if that makes sense like i more so love romance books where a couple kind of like gets to know each other and gets gets to know one another on like emotional deep level and like loves a person for that more so than loves a person because they're quote unquote with them if you get what i mean <laughs> that's why like i love friends to lovers romances so much is because these people already know each other so well and start to fall in love with each other even before they get together in an intimate way and i love it i love it um but anyway i thought this was enjoyable and i feel like the next one is gonna be great too um so yeah i thought this was a great recommendation by tamika thank you so much for recommending it but um i hope to read the rest of the series too and that's about it how many books did i read during this reading vlog i read one two three four five six seven eight I read eight books and DNF'd one. So eight books in seven days, look at me. I plan on reading this one, this Kate Bateman. Later today, I'm gonna be listening to the audiobook, but I know I'm not gonna finish it today. So that's why I'm ending the vlog here. I'm so excited for this one. This one is Arrivaling Families, kind of like Romeo and Juliet thing going on. Um, I'm excited. And yeah, if you wanna know my thoughts about this, this will probably be in my, what month is it? may may wrap up at some point but if you want to know my real in time thoughts for reading this book i post weekly reading vlogs i try to every single week for my channel members so if you want to become a channel member of mine there is a join button on my homepage of my channel that you can join and become a channel member of mine and your name will be the end credits of all my videos and um you'll get dedicated videos kind of like these. But yeah, that's about it. <laughs> um, I'm going to end the vlog here. Thank y'all so much for watching. I want to thank Lisa, Lacey, and Jess for hosting this readathon. It was so fun. I love the historical romance readathon and I read so many books that I've been meaning to read for quite a while. So thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.